So now, in the previous videos here, and if you haven't watched them, please go back and watch them. We talked about the semitone being the smallest interval, and that has every human being has that in them, born with it, that preference. And then we talked about that we have 12 semitones, and in different cultures in the world, we pick out different intervals. We leave out some semitones in between the notes we use, and that becomes a basic scale. And depending on where you are in the world, you have different scales with a bit different basic sound. And then we start picking out notes from these scales, and then we create melodies with them. But all these melodies has, still has that, that signature sound of the scale. But so this video is about chords, is about how we then use these scales to build chords. And that's a very, very simple process that's very easy to understand if you just focus. So please focus. So let's just look at the major scale. We have seven notes, which we drew, drew out or took from the 12, the 12 chromatic notes, right? And so we build intervals by skipping some of the semitones. Now, what we're going to do now is that we're going to choose one note within this uh, scale. And we're in the key of C here. So don't matter if you don't understand what I'm saying, just with the key thing, we're going to return back to that. But we have, we select that first note there, which we call C because of the amount of oscillations it has. And then we build a major scale from that note by simply skipping the semitone intervals. So we skip the third there, we take the fourth, go directly to the next, get to, you know, that step and so on that we've been talking about. And then we get that code that basic code of the major scale, uh, that basic sound. And then we build chords from simply taking the first note. And then instead of going to the second note in the scale, which would be D in this case, instead of playing that, we play the next one, which is E in this case. And so we, we have now, we, we, we're, we're not just skipping semitones, we're skipping scale tones now. So instead of playing that tone that used to a note that used to be in the middle here, we're not playing that. So now I'm actually creating a new scale on top of the scale by skipping notes of the scale. Before I skip, I was skipping semitones. Now I'm skipping scale notes. So I skip the second one and I go for the third of the scale. Then I skip the next one in the scale and I go for the next one. So I'm playing every second note, every other note in the scale. And that creates three notes that sound really good together. It creates what we call a C major chord. But I can, I can do that. I just took three notes. I just took the first here, then I skipped one note, took the next note in the scale. Then I took, not playing that, but the next one there. But I can do, I can go on like this, because I'm not through, I'm not done with the scale. And then I can, instead of playing that note, I'm playing this one. So I'm skipping a note all the time within the scale. And then I get a chord, we call it, that has four notes in it that sounds like this. And we call that a C major seventh, but I'm going to come back to these weird names later. And even though you understand the names and remember them, they're still weird. So this is not, that's not why I'm saying it. It's a weird way of naming the chords. We could do that in a much more simple and systematic way, but we don't. Uh, and I'm going to come back to that, why we don't. So we get a chord like that. And we like, because there's so much distance in between the notes now, they, we can play them together and they sound harmonious, in a harmony. So they really like being played together. If I was not to skip the, the one note there, and I just went for the next one, we would play... This is the first note of the scale, this is the second note of the scale, and if I play those two together, it sounds dissonant. It sounds like this is not harmony. This is like these two notes together sound like they they are in conflict, right? If I do that with the next note, that that's only a semitone interval, just one fret apart. The other two notes here were one whole step apart, leaving out the the, the semitone in between. If I pl play these two together, ah, uh, that sounds even more like they're in conflict, right? So this is a semitone interval. But if we don't do the semitone, and we don't do the 
the whole tone interval. But we do the, we take the next semi tone, we get, we get another. We, now we're so far apart that now we start getting some, some harmony here. And depending on how far apart these notes are, they will sound differently. And that's the whole key to chords. But we've only created one chord now. We took the first note of the scale, and then we took every other note until we had four notes or three notes. We have these two different chords. We have triads, we call them, that has only three notes in them. Or we have um, four note chords, which has four notes in them by taking every other until we have four, right? And the first ones are really mostly used in pop music. You know, D, G, and C, and D minor. Those are all triads, right? They sound very, their identity is very clear. And then in jazz and also some of pop, uh, uh, we have four notes. This is a C major seven. Or a D minor seven. Right? So, so they're kind of a little bit more unclear uh, and has a m more of a complexity to them. But let's just take that seven note scale and do the next chord. And we would just do that the same way. We would go for the next note in the scale. So instead of doing the first note, we take the second. And then from this one, we take every second step in the scale. Right? I go for this one. I don't do that one, but I do this one. And then the next note in the scale from that would be this. But I'm not doing that one. I'm doing the next one. Oh. Now we have our first triad chord here. And we could do that one more time to see. I'm not taking that one, but I'm not, so I'm going for that one. So this would be this chord. D minor seven. But let's just do the three notes and not leave out the fourth there. play it a little bit one octave higher, twice as many oscillations for each of these notes that I'm using. That sounds a little bit different than, you hear that this, the first chord we created by, by going for the first note there, sounds kind of merry and happy compared to, this is kind of sad, and this is kind of happy, right? And that's because we create different chords as we take each step of the scale and we create chords from taking the first or the second or the third or the fourth note and then taking every other from there and creating a chord like that. Because of the code, the basic code, the basic scale and its intervals, we create different chords. And those chords are different simply because we get different intervals in between the notes in the finished chord, right? Because it comes from a scale that has different intervals in between the notes. I hope that makes sense. So, for instance, in the major scale, we have seven different notes, right? And with different intervals in between them. So when we start building chords, we'll get different, and you'll see those on the screen right now, we get different, different sounding chords. We get a C major, we get a D minor, we get an F major, and a G major. Uh, oh, sorry, an E minor and an F major, and a G major, and an A minor, and a, a B minor flat 5, and uh, a C again, a C major. So these chords are different because there are different intervals between the notes of the chord, so they sound differently. What we have now, and we're going to go into more detail about this, but what we have now is suddenly seven different chords that sound differently. So now we can play seven different chords over our basic C major scale. So now I can go, I like this one, I like this one, and I like that. And then, ah, oh, that's pretty neat. Right? So now I'm actually, I'm, pl I'm playing different notes of those same seven notes at the same time. So we get these harmonies. Just these two. And then I can start using the notes of the scale to create melodies over these chords. So now I have harmony in the background and then a single note melody in the foreground. Let me see if I can just play something for it like that. So now I have these two uh, chords running as we go on, but it's just notes from the scale played at the same time. Right? 
So I can then start playing music, uh, which is just amazing. So now I have these two tools of melody, which is chords and notes on top of them, derived from the same scale. And still, you'll notice that it is all going to sound like C major. It's all going to sound like the basic code of that, uh, that scale I'm using. And the same thing goes if you change the scale to something else to fit another culture of the world, the whole game changes to fit that basic sound of that scale that you're using as your foundation.